we're with more people than we know. I'm really, Zoom is starting to grow on me eight months into this whole process. So we've been working with this idea in these classes as discomfort as teacher and like the process of how we can use these things that make us uncomfortable as a teacher. I'm sure we all have many things to pull from right now that are making us uncomfortable. So the first week we worked on presencing. So first just allowing ourselves to like feel the uncomfortable feeling is I think my, actually all of these are challenging for me. The first two are the most. So first present seeing like, oh, I'm feeling really sad right now, or I'm feeling really uncomfortable, or I'm feeling really angry and just like allowing it to be there. Instead of trying to justify it away, or I'm really good at trying to like look for the things that are good about it, but not doing any of that, just like allowing it to be what it is. And this is where I gave, I think the salt example of if you put salt in a shot glass, it becomes overwhelming. But if you put shot glass, a, a shot glass of salt into the ocean, a non-salty ocean, you wouldn't really be able to tell the salt is there. It's not gripping on to the feeling and it's also not pushing it away. So that's step one, this idea of presencing. And then step two, what we worked with yesterday or last week was being patient. So it's not like, oh, I've been present with it for a few minutes. Now I'm ready for the next thing. But like, oh, this might be this way for a while. And I'm going to try to be patient with it. So now we're on this kind of third step, which is now I can start to make little adjustments. Nothing like huge, but try to make a little adjustment so I'm in a slightly better space, whether that's like a physical or a mental adjustment. And because we've presence and then because we've been patient when we make this adjustment it's coming from this place of being responsive instead of reactive right when I'm like oh I don't want to be sad so I'm gonna go eat a brownie um that's like a more a reaction instead of like oh, I've been sad for a while what are little things I can start to do to not necessarily change my sadness but to be taking an action that could have a positive that could put me in a slightly better position in relationship to my sadness. Does that kind of make sense? So today, I see all these straight heads, no nodding. Um, today we're gonna, we'll be working on the shoulders. So you guys have all done this stuff with me, but we'll be doing some shoulder adjustments. We'll get in the position, kind of notice what's present and then make an adjustment. Like I remember in the beginning, for in yoga for a while, it'd be like, I'd get into the pose and immediately I'd start adjusting it. Now when I practice in my like weird modified way, I try to get in the pose and just notice like what's actually going on in this pose and try to be slower before I'm like, oh, well, I know 20 adjustments I should immediately start to do. So let's start by taking an upright seated posture. Cross legs or sitting on your heels, let your eyes close. And begin by getting present. What's happening in your physical space right now? Especially your exterior space. Is there anything that you need to acknowledge so it doesn't keep gripping your attention? And then notice what's going on internally. And the acknowledging it is not like, now I'm gonna obsess over this sensation or this sound. I'm just like, oh, I hear my kids playing and that doesn't need to change, but it's not gonna grip my attention. And I'm also not going to try to avoid hearing them. I'm bringing in a little bit of patience. Like whatever might be alive for you doesn't need to shift right after this class. That you're giving it space to just be. And 
and draw your hands to in front of your heart. And set an intention for your practice today. Maybe your intention has to do with your adjustment. Maybe looking for little things you can do to try to put yourself in a better position to what's going on for you at the moment. Nothing drastic, nothing that's in reaction, but just like a small response you could do. And then take your hands to your knees or your ankles. And as you inhale, you're gonna take a little arch in your spine. And as you exhale, you're gonna round your spine back. So this is like seated cat cows. Inhale, arching. Exhale, round. And we're gonna continue that, but we're gonna make it bigger by taking the hands, interlacing them, and putting them behind the head. As you inhale, opening up the chest, squeezing the head of the arm bones back, drawing the tips of the scapula together, pushing the back of the skull into the hands. And as you exhale, drawing the elbows towards each other and rounding through the back of the spine. Inhale, opening and closing. I feel like I can get a little bit more focused into the shoulder area. See if you can work on spreading the scapula tips further away from each other as you round and drawing the scapula tips in and together as you back them. Right now coming to a neutral position. So the spine is tall, shoulders are integrated, but you're not breaking too much through the ribs and take a little side stretch to the left. And then come back up through center and to the right. Keep pushing the head gently back into the hands and tractioning the hands away from the shoulders. Back through center to the left. This time release the left hand to the floor and stretch your right arm up. So the biceps next to the right ear, push down through the sitting bones, push down through the left hand and begin to open up more through the rib cage. And come back through center, hands behind the head, little side stretch to the right. And then right hand comes down, left arm extends. Take a round of breath to kind of settle and notice, and then start to do little small refinements that might make this pose feel slightly more expansive. Right, and come back up. I was gonna do something with a strap, but I don't think I am. So we're gonna move into breath of fire. So if you have something going on with your lungs or for some reason breath of fire doesn't feel appropriate, you can always work on long deep breathing. That's like the most beneficial breath. Inhaling into your low belly, letting it fill up to the top of the head and then exhale, releasing the breath, belly draws in and up. Or we'll do breath of fire where you can start by sticking out your tongue in panting. And then once you've got that, you do it through your nose. One thing I've been trying to work on people is to have them not like move too much. Sometimes I see this. Like so, so movement, try to make it really subtle. Mirbo, go upstairs, please. Oh, my puppy is discovered. Close your eyes and gaze up towards the third eye but between the eyebrows. Doing this rapid in and out breath, even inhales and exhales through the nose. This breath is really great because it creates heat in the body and during the winter, we're starting to get more cool. So it's a good antidote for the cool dryness of the winter, adding this heat. And it's also really soothing to the nervous system. So although it can feel like a hyperventilation, 
I think I said that word wrong. It's actually really calming to your nervous system. So you can be in a space where you're more responsive versus reactive. Inhale, hold the breath, squeeze the muscles of the pelvic floor and lengthen through the spine, soften the shoulders, get more still within yourself, not pushing anything away, not grasping anything, and release. And we're gonna do that one more time. You can either do long deep breathing or seated breath of fire, or we can do, we'll do this or a charger variation where you take your hands, Draw your finger pads into the knuckle ridges, thumbs extended. Take the arms out at 60 degrees. So not down here or up here, like out in between. Thumbs point towards each other. Both shoulder integration, ribs in, chin slightly tucked. So it's like you're pulling the weight up out of your hips in either long, deep breathing or breath of fire. Continue one more minute. As you breathe, imagine that you're creating this white light inside of you is getting brighter and brighter. As you breathe, this white light begins to expand out of the center of your being. So it goes up through the crown of your head infinitely to the sky, down into the ground infinitely into the center of the earth, out to the sides of you, out in front of you in all directions until it feels like you're engulfed in this white light. Inhale deeply, touch your thumbs together, extend your fingertips to the sky and stretch, hold your breath. Exhale completely, hold the position. With the breath held out, stretch up. Inhale. And then as you exhale, release your hands down, let your eyes close, sit and notice. I find breath work really good to help kind of like clear away some of the stuff so it's easier to be with myself. Okay, really nice. And then come into table position. And then sit back on your heels for child's pose. In your child's pose, Drag your sitting bones back and walk your fingertips forward so you're getting more length through your sides. And then walk your hands over to the right. Drag the left sit bone back, maybe bend your right elbow and plant it back by your heels. So it's like a chaturanga arm. Then you can push into your right hand, lift your belly in and up into the right as you keep stretching through your left fingertips. And then walk your hands over to the left. Okay, come back through center, come through table, tuck your toes, downward facing dog.
Little bend in your knees, drag your sitting bones up to the sky. From your hands, draw the shoulders into your heart. And then from your heart, press through your hands, reach through your hips and reach the heels towards the earth, getting the stretch to the back of the legs. As you inhale, sweep your right leg up to the sky. Open your hips to the right. Keep your left shoulder lifted. The shoulders stay integrated, shoulders beginning to get some heat in them. And then square the hips back off, right foot lowers to the floor, downward facing dog, and then sweep your left leg up to the sky. Open the hips to the left, right shoulder stays lifted. All right, and then square it back off. Downward facing dog, lower your knees to the floor and sit back on your heels in hero's pose. I'm still gonna sit like this since I can't do hero's pose. And we're gonna take the right hand to the right. You can either stay on your hand or you can bring your elbow to the floor depending on what feels like you can still keep a lift in it. And then we're gonna take the left arm and we're gonna start to circle it. So the left arm will reach towards the head, palm face down, and then turn the palm up and stretch out around. When it reaches to the left, palm flips over, taking big arm circles. All right, and then taking the left hand behind your head, pushing your head back into your hand, drawing the nape of your neck, neck slightly away from your shoulders. Shoulders draw down the back as you curl back. Oh, and then push yourself back up. And do some shoulder circles. And then switch side, coming down, right elbow or left elbow to the floor or left hand. So your hand, you can decide what how high up you are and then beginning to take backward arm circles. Maybe linking your breath with your movement. Maybe being curious about what shoulder, how the shoulders feel different. Curiosity is a great way to anchor into the present moment. One more. And then take the hand behind your head, curl back, push down through your left arm, draw the left shoulder back as you spin the chest more up to the sky. Belly engaged. And then press yourself back up. Okay, really nice. And then come forward on your hands and knees again, downward facing dog. In your downward facing dog, look forward and walk your feet forward. Uttanasana. Just barely gained the ability to be able to do this. Very exciting news over here. Notice where the weight is on your feet. Shift your feet forward and back until you have the weight evenly between your heels and the front of your foot. Normally people stay a little bit too far back. So shift a little bit more forward to activate the legs. And with the fingertips on the floor and the head hanging, drop, do some backward shoulder circles, bringing more mobility into the shoulder sockets. And then draw the shoulders together and up and keep them up and rotate the head from one side and then to the other side. This head is turning out no. Then bring the head through center, take your hands to your hips. Keep drawing your shoulders up and together and stay here or take your hands together and clasp them or you could take your hand to a strap. Keep a little bend in your elbows and reach your knuckles up to the sky.
And as you're in the pose, you might feel like a little adjustment might make this pose more beneficial to you. Really nice. And then plant your fingertips on the floor. Step your left foot back to a high runner's lunge. Lengthen the spine forward. Draw the right knee forward. Keep the left hip lifted. And then we're going to work the left knee to the floor. And we're going to move into our modified Parsva Konasana. So the left knee will come down. And then the left foot will spin to the right. So the shin is parallel to the back of the yoga mat. Then come up through this like modified version of warrior two. And then you can choose if you want to take your right elbow to your right knee, or if you want to bring your right fingertips to the floor or the block. The knee stays wide, left hip stays back. Draw the right shoulder into the shoulder socket. And then you can keep your left hand on your hip or listen after being in the pose for a little bit, what feels most appropriate to you. You could take your hand up to the sky or over your ear or hand behind your head. And work on paying attention to what's happening in your body. And then being patient enough to be able to respond with small adjustments. And when the response should be like making a physical change and when it should be just staying. For these last few rounds of breath, try to get a little bit more opening in the chest, shoulder blades integrate into the heart. Really nice, and then unwind. Come back into your high runner's lunge. And then step forward, Uttanasana. Switch sides, left foot comes back, or right foot comes back, right knee over your ankle. Take a moment to create some length in your lunge. And then ground your right knee down. Pivot your right foot, shins parallel to the back of your yoga mat, and begin to move into your second side. You're proceeding in your own time. Listen to the sound of your breath. Integrate the shoulders a little bit more. Shoulder blades draw together. Heart space opens and expands. Pushing down into the floor and lengthening. As you exhale, unwind, step back through your high runner's lunge, and then press back, downward facing dog. From down dog, you could move into child's pose, or if it feels good for your body, you could move through a vinyasa, coming forward to plank. Doing a little cobra. And then eventually we'll all meet back into child's pose. Noticing what's gripping your attention the most. Mm -hmm. See if you can make the choice to allow it. Allow it to be there.
And while you're allowing whatever is there to be there, can you begin to focus a little bit more on your breath? And this breath that is the constant in our life. Really nice. Press yourself back up onto your heels and we're going to transition into cow face pose. The legs will be wrapped over each other. I'm going to only do a one legged cow face. So I'm going to take my left knee on top, right leg on the bottom. If you were doing full cow face, your right knee would be bent and your right heel would be on the outside of your butt, but in between both feet, opposite feet on either side of the hips. In cow face, making sure that your low back isn't rounding under too much. This is one of the little adjustments we can do to set ourselves up for a slightly easier day. By having, trying to get a little lumbar curve. So maybe you have to put a cushion under yourself to do that. And then interlace your hands behind your back. And then draw your interlaced hands over to your right hip. So my interlaced hands over here. So they're on this side. Sit and notice. So I notice that my left armpit and my left hips are pretty short. That's a little collapse there. So if you're noticing that, inhale and see if you can lengthen evenly through both sides of the body and then curl the shoulders back to get the lift through your heart. Chin slightly tucks and lifts up. And then this time lift your chin up, turn your nose to the right and tip your head back a little bit. So stretching the front of the scaling muscles the muscles that come down on like the front of the neck. Right left shoulder stays pulled back as the head tips up and back to the right. Sometimes I'll do an underbite here to get a little bit deeper of a stretch in the scalings. Then bring the head back through center, stretch your right arm up to the sky. Bend your right elbow and pat yourself on the back so your right hands behind your shoulder blades. And you don't need to get the bind here, but you're just reaching your hands together. You could use a strap if you wanted, or you can just keep the hands there. Work on peeling the chest open and pushing the head back into the hands. Either choose to stay upright or hinge forward. I release the arms. I like to do like a little wave motion and switch the cross of the legs. Oh. These poses, man, after you don't do them a ton, you really feel them in a whole new way. Okay, second side, interlacing your hands behind your back. If you wanted to switch it up even more, you could switch your hands and you could cross your hands in the opposite direction. So the opposite pinky and thumb have switched positions. And then taking the hands over to the left. Sit and notice. And then make little adjustments. And we'll take the scaling stretch on the right side by tipping the head back, turning the nose to the left, and then leaning the left ear a little bit backwards. Maybe taking some micro movements with the chin, 
maybe extending the bottom teeth forward of the top teeth to help it find a stretch that feels right for today. Bring the head back through center. We'll extend the left arm up to the sky, bend the left elbow, begin to take your hands closer together. Here, the right shoulder turns in a lot. And we're not necessarily changing that, but you can add this little adjustment where you're still spinning your inner right armpit out to the right. Awesome, and release, little wave action. We're gonna do a little bit of myofascial release today, working with the, a little bit closer. Working with the upper chest. Also take this off so you get a little bit better of a view. So it's kind of nice because we're on Zoom. So I like to, when you do myofascial release where you're using your hand, it's really nice to be able to have your hand on your skin because you can pull. I like to think of the myo, the fascial, the fascia. They're like sheets that are on top of each other. So it's not like a specific muscle that we're working with as much as although we work with muscles and we work with the fascia, but we're just trying to gently pull down the sheet so that there can be more glide. So when you do it on your, on your clothes, it's a little bit harder. So I would reach up, this is a pretty tight shirt, so I'll probably be able to just move it out of the way, but normally I'll reach up under my shirt to do it. So the first one we're gonna do is underneath the collarbone. Let's take the right hand underneath the collarbone. And you're just gonna like find some pressure with your right hand on your skin. And you're just gonna pull down a little bit. And then I'll normally take my left hand for a little bit more weight. And like you're sitting in meditation, but all this myofascial is a pin and lengthen. So we pin the muscle down and then we make the muscle expand. So we're gonna be making this, normally on other parts of the body, we do like a movement of a joint. With this one, we're gonna use our breath. So as you pin the muscle down, you're gonna take an inhale into your belly and then up into your collarbones. So you feel really expansive and then hold the expansion as you exhale. And just continue breathing. I like this work because it's looking for subtlety. Before, especially in my yoga practice when I was a lot younger, I always wanted like big sensations that's how I like thought I was doing it right. But as I've gotten older and wiser, I've been trying to find like the magic that lives in the subtlety. This isn't supposed to be really big and obvious. This is supposed to be subtle. Walk your hands in just a little bit. So now you're just slightly medial of where you were, closer to the sternum. Same thing, pushing down or in and down slightly. Letting your awareness anchor on the different sensations that change with the breath. Okay, second side, taking your left hand, starting slightly wider, kind of like in the middle of the collarbone. Not too firm of pressure, but pushing down, in and drawing down. You might feel like a little tugging around other parts of the body because this fascia goes all throughout us.
walking the hands a little bit more medial towards the sternum, pushing in and down. And we're gonna do the left side again. We're gonna take the right hand to the front of the head of the arm bone. And we're going to go to inside, kind of where the deltoid hooks on. So not on the arm bone, just inside. And I'm gonna be pulling towards my like right boob. <laughs> but that subtle push, drag, and then the other hand anchors. And then draw the shoulder back and down. Same breath. Hey, Mike. Breathing in and wide into the shoulder. Chin stays tucked, back of the neck lengthens to the sky. And switch sides. Sometimes I find too, if I take my elbow that's bent and push it out a little bit, I'll get a stretch through the back of the arm. And release. Okay, last one. We're gonna go just to the inside of the sternum. So here's the sternum. I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna push down and out. So I'm gonna do it with my same hand. So I'll do it over my shirt for you to see. So I'll go like right to the inside of my left boob. And I'm gonna be pushing in and drawing a little bit out. And I'm trying to not turn my chest. I'm gonna go in and out. And try to breathe, fill up your belly and then fill up your ribs evenly. So the front, the sides and the back. Second side. The breath and slightly twisting your chest away from your pulling hand. All right, and release to the shoulder rotations. Okay, and then we're gonna come into a two shoulder stretches. So the first one, I agree, 
clothe myself is gonna be a passive pec opener stretch. So I'm gonna lay down on my belly and extend my arm out to the side, palm face down, and then I'm gonna to start to roll over backwards. What's great about these body weight stretches is you can really change the sensation by how much weight, where you put your weight. So I'm laying on my belly, kind of like in Cobra. I'm mixing my right arm out to the right. I like my right hand either in line with my shoulder or I'll go slightly up. I don't go down and then begin to roll over onto your right side. I often bend my left knee and put my left foot behind my right knee. You can make this more intense by trying to roll more over backwards to the right or less intense by rolling a little bit to the left. Take a few breaths to notice and to arrive. And then see if there's any little adjustments you can do. The little adjustments I'll normally do here is I'll move the head slightly backward, keeping the chin tucked. And I'll keep the head of the arm bone squeezing back and down. I inhale and unwind. And then I put my hands like Cobra and do a few backward shoulder circles, circles. And then take your left arm out to the side, palm face down and line with the shoulder slightly above. Turn your chest to the right. Maybe right foot comes behind your left knee. making any little adjustments, maybe head back, maybe shoulder slightly more integrated into the socket, maybe core slightly engaged. And then once you've made your adjustments, you go back to being present and patient. All right, as you inhale, unwind back the table. And we're going to do a deltoid stretch. So I'm going to come up. I'm going to stretch my right hand forward on the floor so I have some space between my chest and the floor. And then I'm going to turn my right palm up and begin to stretch my right arm between my left hand and my left hip towards the left. So you can stay up on your forearm so it's not as deep where you could begin to stretch your left hand more forward and your right hand more to the left. You can make this more intense by trying to turn your chest towards the right, trying to get your left armpit closer to the floor. You can make this less intense by turning a little bit to the left. The adjustment I normally like to do here is just like a small reminder to my right shoulder that I'm not trying to pull it out of the socket. So it's a little muscular hug back in and down.
from here, pull up your right, no, nope, left knee. Your left knee drags up. Then you're gonna take your right hand and flip it over so it holds onto the left knee. And then you're gonna begin to roll over onto your back towards the right. So you're gonna come into a reclined twist. You can stay here or you can bend your bottom leg, your right leg and reach down with your left hand and take the quad stretch. Maybe squeezing the right glute and pushing out through the knee. And also play with kicking the foot gently into the hand and using your right hand to gently pull the left knee across the body. Again, subtle. Belly in and up, long spine. And then as you inhale, unwind. Lay on your back and massage your butt into the floor or do some windshield wipers. And then make your way back to your belly. And begin to move on into the second side. Right hand comes forward, left palm flips up. And then hike the right knee up. Left palm flips over to hold the right knee down. Right knee will lift up a little bit as you rotate over and ground both shoulders to the floor. Right hand reaching to the right. Nose up to the sky. Stay in here or bend your bottom knee and reach down with your right hand. Maybe adding in some of those refinements, squeezing the glute, pulling the knee and foot away from each other. And then as you inhale, unwind, come to lay on your back, soles of the feet on the floor, palms turned up, and just take little windshield wipers back and forth with the knees. You can go back and forth at the breath or you could hold one side for a little bit longer and then hold the other side. And bring the legs back to center. So, um, soles of the feet come to touch, knees fall away from each other. Take one hand to your belly, one hand to your heart. And 
feeling like this mama there to yourself who won't push any of your feelings or your needs away. I think about my kids and I can't imagine them coming to me with anything where I'd be like, no, I won't console you. And so can you do that to yourself? Just allowing whatever is there to be there. without Velcro growing yourself to it or repelling it away. And even if you do, that's okay as well. And then we're gonna make our way up to sitting for our mantra. So you can either rock back and forth, come up to sitting or roll over to one side. Okay, so the mantra we're gonna be working with today is Durga's mantra. This one's like probably my favorite one of all time. It's Om Doom Durga Yay Namaha. And Durga is like con called upon when like the world is at its like worst state and no one knows what to do. Durga is the force that is like called. It's like the, the combination of all the gods and goddesses creates Durga. Durga arrives on the scene to like this big mess and is like, okay. And the first thing that she does is she goes to a cave and she just becomes present and she sits and she breathes. And then from there, she goes out and takes action and defeats this demon who's destroying the world. So she is the, the one you call upon to overcome your difficulties, to give you a protection and the courage and the like little internal flame you need to break through. So, oh, I wanted to show you, I want to show you this mudra that I like to do with it. I think a lot of you have done this with me before. It's the fearless heart mudra. So you're going to take your Index and your thumb together. This is Surya Mudra. So it helps gives you like the flame of the sun. And then you're gonna cross your right hand in front of your left. So the left hand's closer to your heart. And then you're gonna interlace your pinky fingers, not your ring, cause they're touching your thumb, your middle fingers and your index fingers. And then you widen your elbows and pull your hands in front of your heart. So one more time, that's the ring finger to the thumb. Right hand crosses in front of the left and then the pinkies, middle, index, engage, and the hands widen. So this is called Fearless Heart Mudra. We'll close our eyes. Oh, I'll give you that screen again. So I will inhale through the nose and then do one round of the mantra. And we'll do that for a few minutes. Inhale. Om Dum Durga Ye Namaha. 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 
Om Dum Dragaye Namaha 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 Last time Om Dum Dragaye Namaha Inhale Hold the breath, lengthen through the spine Soften any tension Exhale and release. Sit and meditate. We'll see if you can feel like the vibration echoing within your cells, this vibration that's like calling upon this inner strength. Draw your hands in front of your heart. Draw your head to yourself and think of a few things that you did that you can acknowledge. The small things. Just noticing the subtlety of the ways you show up for yourself, the way you show up in your life. So even when things seem like it's chaotic, when it seems like things aren't meeting your expectations, you can notice these like small things that you are doing. Thank you so much for being here this morning. I hope you guys have a week where you can allow the discomforts to come up, be present with them, try to be patient with them, and then make these little adjustments. Namaste. So nice to see you all. Thank you, Kim. Yeah, so good to see you, Melissa. You too, Kim. There's a lot of good yoga in Denver too. So I think yeah. you're...